left. I'll do my best. Three hundred seventy-nine thousand four hundred ninety-two. Whoa! That Kaishinia gun was so cool. I wish I knew how to do that. Well, the most important concept to understand when it comes to shooting guns is the combustion that occurs within the chamber of the gun when a bullet is fired. Oh yeah, that's what causes the force that propels the bullet and kills the bad guy. Exactly, and with this knowledge, you too can kill bad guys. See, I had an experience in Nam that's similar to this. You can learn a lot from it. Hey, you! Pew, 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 pew! In most firearms, including handguns, there are two actions, single action and double action. Single action occurs when the hammer must be manually pulled back, and then the trigger only brings the hammer down or hits the internal striker. Double action is when pulling the trigger will both cock the gun and fire the bullet. In a hammer-fired weapon, the hammer on the back of the slide must come down to hit the firing pin, which thus hits the bullet and causes it to propel out of the gun. In a striker-fired weapon, there is an internal striker within the gun that is cocked and will then hit the firing pin, which hits the bullet and releases the bullet. In hammer firing weapons, the weapon can be easily decocked by just simply putting the hammer back up. This requires no pulling of the trigger. However, in striker fired weapons, the trigger must be pulled and the bullet brought out of the gun in order to decock it. This means that although hammer fired weapons can be easily decocked, striker fired weapons are better for more readily being able to shoot the weapon. The double action of the weapon allows for semi-automatic weapons to exist. This is because the trigger can be repeatedly pulled and bullets will keep firing. However, in the hammer fired striker, only one shot can be fired between each cock of the hammer. Okay, it's a minute and 40 seconds. So in summary, striker fired guns are a technological advancement that allow for semi-automatic fire and quicker reflexes when shooting guns. Hammer fired guns have to be cocked every time you shoot the bullet, which makes them slower and less efficient. In order to understand the physics behind firearms, first we must understand how gases and the molecules in gases behave. Gases behave in such a way that can be described by the ideal gas law, which can be stated as pressure times volume is equal to the moles of gas times the pressure constant times the temperature in kelvins. Let's get a better idea of what all these terms really mean. First, let's start with the volume. Volume is the amount of space that something occupies, relatively self-explanatory. In the context of the gun, the volume will not change until the bullet is moved. Temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of molecules in a gas. In other words, a higher temperature means faster molecules. The number of moles of gas is how much gas there is. For today's purposes, you can think of it as the mass of the gas. Pressure is the force applied perpendicular to the surface of an object per unit area over which that force is distributed, which can be simplified to the forces applied to the container by the gas, which is how most of us think of it. Increases in pressure can be attributed to an increase in the frequency of collisions between gas molecules. The increase in collisions results in more molecules colliding with the container, resulting in more force being exerted on the container. At first, the inside of the gun is at a standard temperature and volume, so the molecules are not excited and are not exerting significant forces on the bullet or the barrel. Once the propellant is lit, a significant amount of heat and gas is introduced into the system. This results in more molecules of gas being int introduced that move faster than before. When more moles of gas are introduced, there are more molecules moving in the same amount of space, making it so there are more collisions between the molecules and therefore more pressure. The same can be said for temperature. The added heat or kinetic energy of the molecules means they are moving much faster and colliding more, creating more pressure as well. Because any system's tendency is to return to the pressure of the air surrounding it, the increase in pressure results in significant force being applied to the bullet in order for the system to return to equilibrium. Some of the force of the pressure is also applied in the opposite direction of the bullet, as well as the top and bottom of the barrel. Due to Newton's third law and the conservation of momentum, when the bullet is shot, 
Force is applied to the gun in the opposite direction. The bullet has an extremely high velocity and kinetic energy, so despite the gun's comparably massive weight, it is still moves significantly. In order to counteract this force, guns are designed so where the user's grip is as close to the source of the force as possible, in order to reduce the torque created by the gun. In summary, when a gun is fired, the pressure is increased because the amount of gas in the chamber is increased and the temperature of the gas in the chamber is also increased. The extra pressure created by this is the source of force that pushes the bullet out of the gun. A vital part of understanding the physics behind combustion within guns is understanding the substances within guns that create the pushing force that sends the bullet flying out of the gun at incredible speeds, causing them to be harmful and therefore useful. There are two main types of propellants within guns, black powder, which is also known as gunpowder, and smokeless powders. Smokeless powder is a propellant, while black powder is more of an explosive. An easy way to tell the two apart is by seeing how much smoke is produced whenever firing a gun. Black powder produces a great amount of smoke, while smokeless powder produces much less smoke, therefore being named smokeless powder. Of these two types, black powder is the one more commonly used today, but all modern propellants have to have a couple of properties that make them effective. They must be explosive, but not too explosive. If the explosion produced by the velocity of the combusting gas is too high, the flame front can exceed the speed of sound and cause the stress on the gun barrel to be very high. This huge amount of force within the barrel of the gun can even cause it to explode, causing the gun not to be very effective. So guns have to be produced with this in mind. Otherwise, firing a gun would be more damaging to the person shooting the gun than to the enemy who is being shot at. This knowledge allows engineers to modify the guns in a way that will minimize this recoil force. Some guns have muzzle brakes, which redirect propellant gases to counter recoil. The strategy behind these devices is to control the burst of gases, instead of letting them wildly combust within the barrel of a gun during the process of firing a bullet. Different muzzle brakes accomplish this with a fairly similar design. They all attempt to direct the combusting gases at a sideways angle, away from the muzzle end of the gun. By doing this, the momentum of the gases no longer adds to the recoil, since they do not act in the same direction as recoil does. Without this physics knowledge, guns wouldn't be nearly as effective or safe for the users as they are today. This is why understanding the physics behind combustion within the barrels of guns is vital in the creation and use of weapons such as firearms. There are two main types of propellants found within guns, black powder and smokeless powder. These both create a pushing force that sends the bullet flying out of the gun at enormous speeds. However, this creates a pushback force known as recoil. Often, muzzle brakes are used to divert or mitigate this force so that shooting a gun is smoother and more effective. That's why you need to know the physics behind the firearms, because that way you can come up with new innovative ideas to reduce the recoil and use a variety of propellers with different benefits. No, I don't know what all that means, but the only reason we need to know the physics behind guns is to have better guns. <laughs>